In this video, I'm going to demonstrate part of the aseptic technique and how to pour plates from TSA, triptych soy agar. So this triptych soy agar, it was previously prepared and sterilized by me and in the previous videos, I show how uh, you s dissolve the agar as you're boiling it to prepare it before sterilization. And I also show you how to sterilize the media in the auto plate. Now, once you have then your uh, media in the countertop, which is this, the first thing that you need to do is of course wear your PPE, which includes basically pretty much uh, lab coat that has long sleeves, wear your gloves. If you uh, don't wear lenses, basically you wear goggles. And have a bottle of disinfectant so you can disinfect the countertop and also have your Bunsen burner, your lighter for the Bunsen burner. And of course you will have thermal gloves to prevent you from burning yourself when you're pouring these plates because the Erlenmeyer flask with the media pretty much is hot. And the media it has to be uh, before pouring it at around 50 degrees Celsius. And you have your Petri plates. Petri plates are basically holders for the media so that you can have a surface where you can put the media and these pitcher plates comes in sleeves. These are the standard size, the most usual, usual size, which are 100 times 50 millimeters. Now the pitcher plates, they have a bottom and they have a lid. And whenever you are opening these sleeves, take into account that these sleeves are holding these pitcher plates, which are disposable and they are sterile. So you have to open them only around a sterile area and try to not detach or well separate the lid from the bottom of the plate without being in the sterile area and in an unnecessary step because otherwise you will contaminate your slip. These slips basically pretty much have 25 PG plates and uh, the media that you have to add to the bottom of the plate is whatever media you choose or you have but it has to be a specifically uh, 25, sorry, 20 milliliters of the media. The, oh, the lights are kind of uh, getting dimmer. So I'm going to uh, hurry up and show you then this demonstration of how to pour plates. So pretty much what you do is clean up your area, spray with disinfectant, have your paper towel, and then start swiping the area that you are going to sterilize. After that, you will light up the Bunsen burner so you open the gas valve enough to have a good flame, so not too much, not too little. So pretty much like that, so you can have a good surrounding sterile area. And what you will do as well, it is to have your media close by. You will open your sleeve of the PG plates. Uh, they have a kind of a clasp here. Uh, or an area where you can basically tear the two parts of the plastic apart, but I'm using scissors just to make it more uh, even the cut and then much easier to handle. And whenever you're grabbing your picture plates, try to grab them one by one together the lid and the bottom. The bottom is much smaller than the lid. And then you put it here in the countertop and I'm going to lower a little bit the camera so you can see how I pour this, this plate. So pretty much 
Again, you work around this sterile area and you shouldn't be talking that much. I mean, I'm right now I'm talking because I have to explain, but whenever you're pouring plates and you don't need to talk, just don't talk because right now while I'm wearing a mask, it helps to prevent microorganisms from going into my plate. But if I'm not wearing a mask and I'm talking necessarily, I might contaminate this, this plate. Now, when you are uh, going to wear the two thermal gloves, when you're grabbing your, your uh, flask, make sure that you grab it by the neck. This is the neck of the flask. And whenever you open the flask, this is basically a cap that I made out of aluminum foil. You open it up carefully so you don't touch the inside of this aluminum foil because perhaps you need to do something, you need to pause and you put it back. But if you contaminate it, if you touch the, the bottom or the inside, then you cannot put it back. Okay, so that's one thing. And then when you put it into the countertop, you put it with the outside portion against the countertop. And you will flame a couple of times the opening of the flask. And then you will open your plate next to the sterile area. And you will pour the, the agar around two thirds of the way. And then you will put your flask on one side, next again by the sterile area, and then the lid. There's two things. You can leave it like that, uh, facing up, but it's not very recommendable. Or, as well, you can put it like this, half open, next to the bottom of the plate. But as long as it's in the actual area, of sterilization, and I'm going to take off my mittens because it's hard to handle the lid without, uh, with the mittens. So basically pretty much, as long as you keep it here next to the sterile area, there's nothing wrong with having the lid like that. Why Why you want to do that? Well, because the agar is, is hot, and uh, if you put the lid immediately, something that is going to happen is that the condensation will accumulate, and then that condensation will go into the media. Now another thing that you can do is pour many plates at once and then stack them one to each other and that prevents the condensation from accumulating in the lid. But you have to be very uh, fast into doing that and if you don't have the experience, basically pretty much uh, you cannot do it. So once you, you basically know that this media is uh, cold, well not cold, but once it's cold enough or a good temperature, uh, you will know that then you can put the lid back on. And the media, how do you know that it's solidified? Well, the color of the media in here, if you see the edge, uh, pretty much is very translucent. And it takes an opaque color once it solidifies. So that's how you know it is done. Plus right now, you see how it's moving the liquid? Well, it's because it's hot. And sometimes another thing that it can happen, so you have to wait till it's solid. One thing that it can happen is basically towards the end, when you're pouring the media, uh, when, when you are having very little media in your, in your flask, something that it can happen is that the actual agar will have bubbles as you're pouring it, and the bubbles will be on the surface of your of your plate. If the bubbles are on the edge, not so much a problem. If it's in the middle, there's a problem. So how can you get rid of them? Well, you can grab your Petri, no, sorry, your uh, Bunsen burner, and then flame the surface of the agar. I have seen people doing that Perhaps you haven't, but I have seen people doing that. Very good microbiologists, nothing happened. The lid, well, the bottom of the plate doesn't burn or anything. They're very careful in doing that, and they know how to burst the bubbles, basically. So, well, that's one plate. Let me do a second one so you can see a better uh, demonstration of how to do it. And basically, pretty much, you don't work one by one. You will be basically having a bunch of these uh, Petri plates ready to pour without uh, 
having to to wait that long because otherwise if you do it so slowly basically you're going to get frustrated and you're not going to enjoy uh, pouring plates which is fun because it's one of the things that you can get satisfaction whenever you pour plates and then you have good results now how do you know how much is enough well it will be up to two-thirds of the plate the edge so let me show you this plate so pretty much is two-thirds in there and there's a little line in there on the picture plate on the bottom that tells you uh, how much you can add of course you don't want to add it on the lid and you don't want to over add them now in this case this one has a bubble in the center so I burst the bubble in there with the Bunsen burner okay so pretty much uh, this is the demonstration of how to pour plates and the aseptic technique. Have a good day. Bye-bye.